Just as POV. She was amazing. Did you see her? Guys. I ask Logan and Nick excitedly, while the girls are still screaming Kyra's name. Of course we did. She was like an Amazon. Nick says with a wide, proud smile on his face, and I almost feel jealous, as I think about him still loving my girlfriend. I try not to think about that, because that would be totally unfair from me, when I was the one who started dating his ex-girlfriend on the first place. That she is. I will go and stand by the door of the changing room till she finishes. I tell them, then after they nod their heads, I make my way to the door, with a wide grin on my face. She is so perfect. I see her talking to the owner. I think his name was Carter and then she goes into the changing room. I stop by the door and wait for her, still smiling ear to ear. This match was too easy for her, obviously. After ten minutes of waiting I start to get worried, but I calm down as I think about her taking a shower as well, so I just keep waiting when my phone starts ringing. I see Logan is calling so I answer the phone. Where is Kyra? Are you with her? He asks nervously before I can say anything. I am still waiting for her in the front of the changing room. Why? I ask him now anxiously from his worried voice. A Miss Dad said that his colleague called him, who was watching Cody, and told him that Cody is not at home anymore. He must have seen the police watching him, so he left the house somehow without them noticing. Hunter tried to tell Kyra but she doesn't answer her phone. He explains quickly and I burst into the changing room without hesitation. I don't see her anywhere, so I go to the bathroom. Kyra. I call out to her, but no answer and I can't see her anywhere. The shower is still on, but there isn't any sign of her. I look around anxiously and an open window catches my attention. I start to panic and climb out of the window to look around but I can't see anyone on the street either. He got her. I clench my head with both of my hands, as I think about it, and climb back inside to go to find everyone, most importantly a Miss Dad. We must find her now. I grab her bag and clothes, and hurry through the crowd. They are already waiting for me by the entrance, but I see that guy, Carter, so I walk up to him, and grab his collar. What age? He starts with wide eyes, but I cut him off. Where is Cody? I ask him. What the hell, man? He asks and a Miss Dad comes up to us. Let him go, Jace. He says and I let him go reluctantly. What happened? He asks. Kyra is gone. Cody has her. I tell him hysterically and he turns to Carter. I am Officer Hunter. Do you know where your friend is? Carter looks at us in disbelief, before he shakes his head. I don't know, I didn't see him since Friday. He says, Do you know someone who might know? Hunter asks and Carter shakes his head. No, he went Mia since his breakup with Kyra. He says and looks at me from the corner of his eyes. Wait, what about the necklace? I ask Hunter and he takes his phone out of his pocket hurriedly then looks at the screen with furrowed eyebrows. What is it? I ask him impatiently. It says, Kyra is right there. He points at the ring and I walk there. Kyra is nowhere in sight of course. I even look under the ring, but nothing. Then something shiny catches my attention and I walk closer to see the necklace on the floor of the ring. It must have fell when she was fighting. Hunter says disappointedly. What should we do now? He got her. What if he hurts her? What if we won't be able to find her? I start to panic and walk back and forth. Calm down, Jace. She will be fine. She can defend herself. Logan says. Then how did he take her? If she could defend herself, she would be here now. I yell out in frustration. The police is already on it. They are checking the cameras inside and on the street as well. We will find her. Don't worry. Hunter says and I feel useless. What should I do? Where should I look for her now? Check Coda's private informations. There should be something a house on his name. Oh anything. 
I tell Hunter and he nods his head. I will check everything. Now I need to go, but we will stay in touch. He says and I nod my head. Wait, what's his address? I want to look around in his place. Maybe I can find a clue. I tell him and he looks at me skeptically. That's the police's job, Jace. He says, please, let me do something. I will go crazy if I can't help at least. I tell him desperately. All right, but don't go alone and don't touch anything. He says, I will go with you. Nick says and I nod my head with a grateful smile. Then I remember my dad. I should tell him, maybe he can help. He has a lot of connections, what can be useful in this kind of situations. So I take my phone out of my pocket and dial his number without wasting time. Hold on. I tell everyone till I step away from them to talk to Dad. Jace. Everything is okay. He asks and I feel like crying. No, Dad nothing is okay. He kidnapped her. I manage to tell him with shaky voice, after swallowing the knot in my throat. What? Hell. He asks in disbelief. While she was showering after the fight, through the shower window, I explain to him, while I am walking back and forth. We need to find her dad. The police is already busy, but I don't know I want to do something I will go to his place with Nick, to look around for any clue, what might help to know, where he could take her. I tell him and he lets out a sigh. Give me his name and address. I know someone who might help I will see you at his house afterwards. Wait for me outside. He says and I nod my head even though he can't see me. We will find her son. Don't worry. He says reassuringly. I hope so see you soon. I say and hung up, while I walk back to everyone. Dad is coming to help as well. I tell them. It's better if you all go home now we will find her. Hunter says. Yeah, Logan please take Christine home. Nick says and kisses Christine, who is still crying for her friend while Logan nods his head. I will come soon to all right. He asks Christine who nods her head sadly. Please find her. She says and Amy hugs her, who is crying as well. We will tell you if we find something. I tell them and Logan nods his head, and walks away with the girls, after wishing us good luck. We have another address on his name. We will go to check there. You guys go to his apartment. My colleague is there to help you, if anything goes wrong. We will talk later. Hunter says and we all leave the place. Some police officers who Hunter called are interrogating Coda's friends, if they know where he could be so we head to Coda's apartment. There is Uncle Stephen. Nick says when we reach Coda's block. Dad just got here as well. To my surprise he comes up to me and hugs me tightly. We will find her. He says quietly and a few teardrops manage to escape from my eyes. Thanks, Dad. Let's go in. I tell them when we pull away. I don't want to waste time when my love is in the hands of that psycho. Naked on the top of that. I swear to God, I will kill him with my own hands, if he touches her. We walk into the building and search for his door. When we find it, Dad kicks the door in just like in the movies. Nice one, Uncle Stephen. Nick says and we all go inside. Don't touch anything, my friend will be here shortly. We need to look around before the police gets here. Dad says. Hunter knows that we are here. I inform him and he nods his head. We walk around without touching anything, and when I search through his papers, using a pen to push them aside, I find something what can be useful. Dad. These are the papers of a car, but it's not on Coda's name, but his dad's. I assume it's a gray Suzuki. I tell dad and point towards the papers. Good job. He says and takes his phone. Call your friend from the police and tell him every information about the car. He says and I do that without hesitation. Cody left his car here, and I am sure he used another one since he couldn't just carry a naked Kyra on his back, without anyone noticing it. He used his father's car probably when he spotted the police in the front of his house. I tell Hunter, 
all the information about the car. He might need to find it. Now, we just need to wait for the police to cow. Mr. Willis. A man appears in the doorway, dressed in a suit, and Dad turns to him. Uh, finally, I need you to find this guy, as soon as possible. She kidnapped my daughter-in-law. He might use this car. Find him at all cost. He orders as he hands him the needed documents, and we just look at him in awe. I have never seen him like this. He was always composed and calm, but now he is barking out orders, like a mafia boss, or someone important. Also, put someone to check the surveillance cameras on the street of the club and nearby. He adds and the man nods his head while saying yes, sir, and leaves the apartment. Dad. I look at him in confusion. I have so many questions. Not now, Jace. Let's keep looking here as the key to his car. I will go and search it through as well. He says and I nod my head. That's a good idea. I tell him and he walks away. Who was that man? Nick asks in confusion, and I shrug my shoulders. I have no idea. Let's check in his bedroom. I tell him. And we continue looking for clues in Coda's apartment, while Dad searches throughout his car. I hope we will find something useful. Kairos POV. I try to open my eyes, but my eyelids feel heavy, so I close them again. My head is pounding and I feel dizzy. What the hell happened? I ask myself, but when I want to massage my forehead to lessen the pain, I notice my hands are tied. What the hell? I open my eyes in panic, not caring with the headache. What feels like my head will burst in any minute now. My hands are indeed tied to the headboard of the bed. I am laying on, and the second thing I notice is that I am only wearing a thin T-shirt and boxer shorts. I look down at myself in confusion. Did Jace and I had sex? Wild sex, I assume, from my current position. But then, as I look around, my confusion just deepens. I am in a small, dirty, and old room, only with a bed in the middle and a small window high on the wall. Is it a basement room? I ask myself, but I don't need to wait long since my questions are answered. As soon as he steps into the room, with a creepy smile on his handsome face, what I loathe at this moment. Good morning, kitten. Did you sleep well? Cody asks as he steps into the small room I am in. What the fuck did you do, Cody? I ask him furiously as I tug on my tied hands, wanting to free them. Let me go, right now. I yell at him and I remember. He kidnapped me from the shower of the club. He lets out a laugh and looks at me happily. Why would I let you go when I just got to have you? He asks and sits down next to me. I try to put more distance between us, but it's hard since I am tied to the fucking bed. He starts caressing my face and smooths my hair. What is all over the place? And I flinch away from his touch. But he doesn't care at all. The police will catch you, Cody. Why don't you let me just go and I will convince them to leave you alone? We can still fix this. I try to reason with him. He looks at me with a painful expression before saying, "I just wanted to talk to you, Kyra, to have a conversation, but you." You didn't even give me the chance, so I had no other choice than this," he says with a shrug. Now, I start to regret not letting him talk to me before. We can have that conversation now, but please just free my hands and let me tell my friends to tell them I am fine, and they don't need to tell the police. I tell him, even though I know the police is already involved. Do you think I am stupid? I know you went to the police first thing, as you got back from the lake," he says with a hard expression on his face. "Since when are you screwing that guy, huh? Did you cheat it on me with him? That's why you left me, huh? To be with him?" He asks angrily, and my eyes widen. "No, I didn't cheat it on you. You did. We started dating just two days ago. You were the one who cheated, and you wanted to drug me. So don't accuse me with something I didn't do." When you did so much against me, I tell to him frustratedly, almost hysterically. S H, it's okay. His expression softens as he talks to calm me down, while he is caressing my face. 
I am sorry. You are right. He then lowers his head with a guilty expression on his face, and I almost feel sorry for him me, and my stupidly kind heart. Why are you doing this, Cody? I know you are a womanizer and like to fool around with different girls, so why couldn't you let me go? I ask him curiously. He should have found someone else by now who will give him an other rose on his forearm. Why he is putting himself in a dangerous and foolish situation as this one, just because I didn't give myself to him. He looks away for a moment, thinking about what I just said, or what will be his answer, before turning back to me. You are different from them. You challenged me you saw through me every time I tried to go further with you. I actually started to like to have you around. He admits with a smile. How my plan was working out just fine. I see. He started to fall for me. Yeah. Right then why did you want to rape me? Why did you talk to other girls while we were together? I ask him and he looks down again. I, I couldn't I didn't want to admit to myself that you have a hold on me. I tried to fight it at first and I didn't even realize that I did something bad I used to have more girls around at the same time. But I realized that I don't want anyone else but you. The only problem was that I realized it too late. He explains. When you blocked my number and I couldn't talk to you that day, I went mad I was sad and furious at the same time. I wanted to explain to you that I can change, if you give me one more chance. He says desperately. You should have been less aggressive then. I pointed out to him. I still have bruises from the way you grabbed me the other day. I point to my arm with my chin and he caresses the blue spot, with his fingers gently. I am sorry. He whispers with a pained expression. He is acting totally different now. I didn't see this side of him yet, and it calms me, and scares me at the same time. I can't decide if he is mentally ill, or he really just likes me that much. It's okay. It doesn't hurt anymore. I tell him. For some weird reasons, I don't like to see that expression on him. Will you let me go after we talked? I ask him timidly and his expression hardens as he looks at me. I regret asking that question and curse myself for it in my head. The last thing I want is to make him angry. No. He says abruptly. He stands up and starts walking towards the door. But you said you wanted to talk. I tell him in panic. Yeah, I wanted to talk and I wanted you to come back to me. He says, Now that you are here, I won't let you go. We just stopped here, to rest a bit, and to get some warmer clothes for you. But we will continue to travel soon. He says and before I can say more, he is already out of the door. I try to free my hands, but they are tied too tightly, so I give up after a few minutes of trying. After a half an hour I jump slightly as the door of the room opens and Cody walks in with a tray full of food in his hands and a wide smile on his face. Are you hungry? He asks and before I can say something, my stomach answers for me with a growl what makes Cody laugh. I look at him strangely since I have never heard him laugh so freely and sincerely and I almost need to fight a blush. I brought you your favorites. He says and I look at the tray. He got all of my favorite dishes all right. How did you remember? I ask him with a surprised expression, since it was on our first date, that we talked about our favorites. I didn't think you will remember. That was a shock for me as well, but I do remember everything we talked about. He says with a kind smile and my heart softens a little knowing, he actually paid attention every time, I thought he didn't care. He places the tray in the front of me, and starts feeding me, what was weird at first, but then again I was starving so I continue eating without hesitation. I look up at him to find him watching me, but he lowers his head as soon as our eyes meet. What is it? I ask him curiously. I am sorry. He says, he is clearly uncomfortable while saying that. What for exactly? I ask him while I study his face curiously. He is like another Cody, or maybe he just hides his true nature well. For everything, he says and looks up at me. 
He looks into my eyes and continues. For wanting to drug you I just wanted you so bad and the waiting was killing me. I know it's not an excuse, but I am genuinely sorry. He says and I nod my head, encouraging him to continue while he is holding the fork in the front of my lips once again. I see him gulp. I guess he is preparing himself for the next sentence. He will tell me. Sorry for cheating on you. While I was drugged I swear, that was the first and the last time I cheated on you, but only because I was under the effects of the drug. I feel so ashamed of myself what never happened to me before. I couldn't get your face out of my head when you walked in on us, but I couldn't stop those drugs messed up my mind, and I was fighting my urges to go after you all go on for release. The latter one, but I have a feeling, even if I went after you that day, you wouldn't want to listen to me anyway. He says with a sad expression. I am also sorry for being a jerk to you, and calling you names, grabbing you, he lists it softly, while he is caressing the blue spots on my upper arm, and kidnapping you. He adds lastly. I had to do it you moved on so fast, and I couldn't stand the thought that you are with someone else now and I didn't have chance, any more to prove how sorry I am. He says and I kind of understand why he's doing this. This is all my fault for playing with him. I brought this mess on myself. I can't blame him for falling for me, when I was the one who wanted that. I feel guilty for what I did to him, even though he deserved it back, then, but now even the police is after him because of me because of my games. I feel the urge to say something too. I am sorry too. I tell him honestly and he looks at me with surprise. What? Why? He asks and I bit my lips nervously. Should I be honest with him as well? He deserves that much. Well you don't know a lot of things about me yet my intentions weren't as pure either as you think they were when we started dating. I tell him timidly. What do you mean? He asks with a confused expression. I mean you wanted to get laid when you first asked me out in that restaurant, right? I ask him. Yeah. He says while he is scratching the back of his neck. I knew that so I wanted to teach you a lesson so I agreed. I admit and he is just looking at me, waiting for me to continue and I let out a sigh. For some strange reason, I want to be honest with him. Maybe because he is so nice now and he seems honest too. I decide to tell him everything from the beginning. About my painful breakups. About my victims and he just listens quietly to every words I say. When I am done he lets out a laugh and shakes his head in disbelief. You are really something, you know that. He asks and his reaction surprises me and calms me down at the same time. I fell for you alright, he adds. Your plan was actually working but wait. So that's why you didn't leave me, even after you overheard me talking to a girl. He asks in realization, and I nod my head. Yeah, I wanted to play you even more, but I got a bit scared, as soon as I saw the drugs on the bottom of my glass that day. I say and he looks down with a guilty expression. He seems like he really regretted it what makes me confused about him even more. It's like I am not even angry at him after all. I understand everything now. He says and then looks up at me, after a few minutes of thinking. Actually it doesn't matter what I did. I would end up kidnapping you either way. He says and now I am the one who look at him in confusion. What do you mean? I ask Cody. Well you wanted to leave me, after I confessed my love to you, right? He asks and I nod my head. What do you think? I would have just let you leave me after that. He asks and I see where he is coming from. I suppose not. I tell him more like ask and he shakes his head. Nope. I just want you to give me a chance to prove that I can change for you. I know I was an asshole and you had all the right to play me. But now I see that it was all wrong. Please Kyra, just give me a few weeks. You will love me back. I can assure you. He says and I don't think I want to love him. Jay's face pops in the front of my eyes, and I can't help but smile of the thought of him. Then I look up at Cody, who is waiting for me to say something. Actually as you already know I am not single anymore. 
I tell him and he nods his head with a wave of his hand. It's okay. You will just break up with him. You just wanted to play him as well. Right. He asks and I gulp. I don't know if I should tell him the truth, but he should understand that he doesn't have a chance, since I already start to have feelings for Jace. Actually my relationship with Jace is real. I tell him and he froze on the spot, staring at me without moving so I continue. We were fighting and arguing so much, we ended up liking each other. He asked me to be his fake girlfriend, first, to scare his ex away, but we realized what was between us wasn't fake at all. I explain to him without any good reason why, and I see his jaw clenches. Do you love him? He asks in a low voice, with a hard expression on his face. No, that's too early to say, but I really like him. I tell him honestly. He is just looking down sadly, but then a smile stretches on his face, as he looks up at me. That's good. He says after a long minute of thinking and stands up. I just look at him in confusion once again as he continues. Then it will be easier for you to forget about him. He says with a shrug and turns around with the tray in his hand, to walk out of the door, like he didn't even hear what I said after the no. Maybe he is positive thinker, huh? What? Wait you can't keep me here, I yell after him, but he just closed the door behind him. Shit. I curse. What am I supposed to do now? I am thinking of a solution frustratedly, when suddenly I have an idea what might work. Cody Cody. I start shouting his name, when he finally opens the door. Do you need something? He asks from the doorway. Yes, actually first of all I need to pee. I tell him while blushing in embarrassment. Secondly I want to offer you a deal. I tell him and he nods his head, and walks up to me. All right, let's get you to the bathroom first, then we can talk about that deal of yours. But let me warn you, he says and leans closer to me. I saw you fighting and I must say I am really proud of you, but your skills won't help you against me since I am the champion in the club already three years. He says with a seeky smile. I see. We are totally mean to be. He adds and starts to untie me. This information is new to me, but I didn't want to fight him anyway. I really need to pee and I am positive that he will agree to my conditions. Got it. I nod my head and massage my wrists when they are free. Sorry about that. He says and plants a kiss on each marks. Come on, let's get you to the bathroom you can take a shower, as well if you want to. You didn't get to finish the last one after all. He says with a chuckle, and I shake my head at him. That would be nice. I tell him as we walk out of the room. He is holding my hand gently, as we walk on a small, dusty corridor. This is the bathroom, I will bring you an other t-shirt and shorts. He says and walks into another room. I head into the bathroom to see it's dirty as well, just like the rest of the house. I open the faucet to see, if we have warm water at least, and I am happy to find that we actually have. I clean the bathtub as much as I can when Cody walks in with clothes in his hand. Sorry about that. Nobody used this house already three years. He explains. It's okay. At least we have warm water. I tell him. Yeah, I had to arrange the warm water and the electricity. He says. I will be in the kitchen in the end of the corridor. Find me when you finish. He says with a friendly smile, before he walks out of the bathroom, and I almost can't recognize him. That seeky, arrogant, selfish stars is gone and it's really hard to hate him, when he is so nice suddenly. I wait a few minutes till the bathtub fills up, before I undress myself, and sink into the warm water. It was a long time, that I could take a bath, since we had only showers in the dormitory, so it feels really nice to have one now, and I feel my muscles relax right away. I look around for some soaps, and find my favorite shower gel on the edge of the bathtub. I find it a bit strange, that he even know that but I am not surprised anymore. There is two options to describe him. Oh he is every girl's dream, as he remembers of small details, 
if he likes some one. Oh, he is an obsessed stalker. What is more believable given the situation? I pour some shower gel on my hands and scrub every inch of my body with it. When I am done, I wash my hair as well. When I finish with my bath, I get out of the tube and find clean towels in the cabinet. After drying myself, I wear the clothes, what Cody brought me, and look into the mirror. I wonder what Jace is doing now. I am sure he is worried about me and looking for me with the police. I need to talk to Cody as soon as possible. I hope he will agree to my plan. This is all my fault, and I don't want anyone to worry about me when I am actually fine. I was scared of him before, thinking about what he will do to me once he got me, but now that I am here I am not afraid. He is not that bad as I thought he would be, only the way he did this all wasn't the best, but I kind of understand him, since I didn't give him a chance to talk. I head out of the bathroom, and walk on the corridor to find the kitchen. It's not difficult since this house is not so big so I find it right away. Cody is busy cooking what actually surprised me. I didn't know you can cook. I say as I walk up to him, and he looks at me with a sincere smile, what I didn't get to see before, only since I am here. There are a lot of things you don't know about me, yet. He says and turns back to the stove. So what's the deal? He asks and I sit down by the table. I am glad he is letting me walk around freely instead of tying me up somewhere. Well now you are in a bad situation, because everyone is looking for you for kidnapping me, right? I tell him the facts and he nods his head. It was worth it. He comments with a sweet smile, and I just try to ignore his sweet side. It's confusing as hell. So here is the deal. I will stay with you for a few weeks of my own free, well so you can prove whatever you want to. I will call my friend by the police to stop the investigation against you, and I will tell him that there wasn't any kidnapping at all since this whole situation is kind of my fault. I don't want you to have problems with the police because of me. I explain to him, Oh, I knew you care about me. He says playfully and I roll my eyes and just continue. So after the few weeks, let's say three, I will choose between the two of you. I finish and wait for his reaction. He narrows his eyes at me first, but after thinking about it for a minute, his smile returns. He takes my hand in his and lifts it to his lips to kiss it. Thank you for giving me a chance and caring about me. You are a real gem. I knew it. He says and I smile at his compliment. Well I like this Cody better than the seeky one who have tattoos just to show of his women records. I tell him pointedly and his grin widens. He then rolls his sleeve up to show me his tattoo. I need to look twice to see if I see it right. On his forearm right above the roses, there is a big rose and a name in the middle of it what was made from beautiful letters. There aren't any space to add more small roses either, but the most shocking part is that it's my name, what he tattooed on his arm. What? I am speechless. You were right in everything. I was in dick to most of the girls I have been with. Some of them deserved it, but most of them not so I decided to stop. I wanted a cover tattoo to cover the whole thing, but since it's huge, it wasn't possible so I added a last one, of the girl who managed to catch my interest. He says and takes my hand again. He looks into my eyes as he talks. I have never met a girl, like you I used everything I used to with girls, just to have you in my bed, but you didn't budge with time my interest to have sex with you, turned into adoration mostly after you left me. I realized I am not complete without you. I found myself thinking back to our dates, and about how much fun we had without even trying to hard. It felt natural. He says, but but what if I will choose Jace? What will you do with that? I ask him and point to his tattoo. I don't want to admit to him, but his words affect me, so I try to divert the subject back to his tattoo. His jaw clenches as I said that and he lets my hand go slowly. Firstly, I didn't agree to your deal yet. Secondly, even if I don't get to be with you I will never regret having your name on me. 
he says, and I can't believe how much my plan actually worked and how soon. My original plan I mean to make him fall for me. I didn't think it will work by Cody, but here he is and I don't know what I should do with that information. I am with Jace now. I planned on spending the three weeks with Cody, then choose Jace in the end, but now it doesn't feel like the right thing to do. I made a huge mess, and I need to get out of it, without hurting someone in the process. So will you agree? I ask him, referring to the deal. Can I have a day to decide? He asks and I seriously want to tell Hunter to tell everyone that I am fine, but I guess it can wait one more day. Okay, I tell him and he smiles at me. I really missed you. He says as he sits a bit closer. He tugs a lock of my hair, behind my ear, and presses a soft and slow kiss onto my cheek. I just sit there without moving he was never this gentle with me. What the hell is happening? This whole situation is surreal, and I don't know what should I think of it. Maybe as we will spend time with each other, I will see the things more clearly. I hope. I stand in a telephone booth, by a roadside tank station in the middle of nowhere. Cody is standing next to me, as I dial the police's number. Not the emergency ones of course. I want to talk to Hunter, but since I don't have my phone, I don't have his telephone number, either so I have no other choice than to call the police station, hoping he will be there. Be short. Cody comments as the cal connects and a woman answers the phone. Police station, what can I help you with? She asks. Hello ma'am, I need to speak to Officer Hunter, it's urgent. I tell the lady quickly, hoping she won't ask questions. Let me check if he is in, hold on. She says and I wait while Cody inserts some coins into the phone booth. You're lucky, he just walked in. She says and my ears perk up. It's for you. I hear her saying to someone. Hello. I hear Hunter's voice and relief washes over me right away. Hunter, it's me. I say excitedly. Kyra. Oh my god are you okay? He asks worriedly and he sounds shocked as well a little. I guess he didn't expect me to tell him. I am fine Cody is being very nice, so we made a deal. I say and look at Cody, who just nods his head with a small smile, encouraging me to continue. I gave him a month to prove whatever he wants to so I want you to stop the investigation. Since I am now here, with him of my own, will please tell Jace and everyone that I am fine, and I will contact them once the month is over. I tell him. Cody agreed to my deal, but he asked for a month, and since I had no other choice, I agreed. You made a deal, huh? He says with a humorless laugh. Just be careful, Kyra. He might want to deceive you. He warns me. He seems a bit hesitant, but I can understand. Yeah, I know. Don't worry about me, I will be in contact. I say and hang up on him before he can say more. Well that went smoothly. So we don't need to hide any more. Huh. Cody asks happily and I shake my head with a smile. No we don't, but I think they will need some time to cal of the whole thing. I explain. Okay, then we will stay in today, and from tomorrow we can go wherever you want to. Originally I wanted to move further, but now we can stay at the house. He says. Sounds good. But then we should get some cleaning stuff before we die from the dust. I tell him jokingly, and he lets out a laugh. Yeah, we should do that. Come on, let's go home then. He says excitedly and it sounds and feels different like when Jace said, Home, but I don't want to think about that now. He grabs my hand and we walk to his car. What is actually his father's car as he said? Now. I know why the police didn't see him leaving his house to warn us, but maybe it's better this way, because after the month is over we can close this period of our lives. Better than to live in fear every day, waiting when he will do something to me or to Jace. He seems nice now, maybe he will understand if I choose Jace in the end. I hope at least, we have a deal after all. We drive back to the house, what is a kind of farmhouse, by the edge of a forest. I don't know where we are, 
since Cody doesn't trust me with that information, but I know that we are about two hours away from New York. When we get back, we start cleaning the house from the basement till the attic. It took the whole day to finish with everything, and I feel very exhausted. Are you hungry? I ordered pizza it should be here in any minute now. Cody says as we collapse onto the couch, both tired physically. I am starving. I answered with a tired sigh. He surprises me. He is like a different person, like a perfect boyfriend. I would have never thought before that he is the helping with cleaning type of guy. He looks more like the ordering people around type so when he started to help cleaning when we got back, I was a bit shocked, especially after he said kindly and affectionately, What? Did you think I will let you do it alone? We are together in this like in everything else. I even asked him if he has a twin brother, who looks exactly like him, but he just laughed at my silliness and apologized again, for being a dick before. I am deep in my thoughts when the doorbell rings. Oh the pizza. I will get it. He says and walks out of the living room. After a few seconds, he comes back with two pizzas, and a huge grin on his face. Come on, let's eat I am starving. He says and I let out a chuckle, and follow him to the kitchen. What do you want to do tomorrow? He asks and I shrug my shoulders, as I am eating my slice of pizza. I don't know you. I ask him. We should go shopping for you. You can't wear my clothes, everywhere. I wouldn't mind though. He says with a smile, and I look down at myself. I am wearing Coda's huge t-shirt, and pants, what I needed to tie to my waist. Yeah, you are right. I tell him with a giggle. All right, then we will go to the mall tomorrow. He says and we continue eating when a thought flashes in the front of my eyes. Cody. Where I am going to sleep. I ask him. There is only one bedroom in the house, with a king-sized bed. In the bedroom, of course. He says matter-of-factly, like I ask the most obvious question. Then where are you going to sleep? I ask him, already afraid of his answer. He lets out a sigh and places his half-eaten pizza back into the box, before he sits next to me. We are both adults, Kyra. I don't think it will be problem to sleep in the same bed. Huh? He asks gently, but continues as he sees my doubtful expression. I won't do anything to you, I promise. He says as he places his hand on his heart, like it will make it easier to trust him. I can't help. But think about the time he wanted to drug me to have sex with me. I need to be careful around him. All right. I let out a sigh of defeat. Let's just hope he will stay this way, and won't do anything I don't want him to. He grins at me and continues eating his pizza. This is just the first day, twenty-nine more to go and I can go back to my friends and Jace. I hope he trusts me, and he won't go and start to date someone else while I am not around. I don't know how I would handle that. I will go to take a shower. I am very dirty from all this cleaning. I tell him and he nods his head. I stand up to head to the bathroom, but I remember that I don't have any clothes, so I turn back to him. Um, can I borrow some clothes from you? I ask him, while I scratch the back of my neck in embarrassment. Of course, just help yourself. They are in the closet in the bedroom. He says, I nod and make my way towards, our, bedroom. When my eyes land on the bed, I remember I was tied to it just a day ago and shudder. Cody fell asleep on the couch, yesterday, so I was hoping he won't want to sleep on the bed with me. Well I was wrong, but maybe I can still convince him to let me sleep on the couch. I open the closet, and go through his clothes to find something smaller but my hand touches something hard and cold under his t-shirts. Handcuffs. Why he has handcuffs in here? I was tied with ropes yesterday. Wasn't it easier to use this instead? I shrug my shoulders and pick a t-shirt and shorts, before I close the closet and jump in fright, as I see Cody behind the closet door. God, you're scared the shit out of me. I tell him, while I try to slow down my heartbeats with a hand on my chest, 
like it will help it. Sorry, I just came to see if you found what you need, he says with a smile, but looks towards the closet suspiciously, then back at me. I wonder if he has more things hidden in there. Yes, I did. I reply with a smile and show him the clothes in my hand. We will go to buy clothes for you tomorrow, so you don't need to wear mine. He says with a chuckle. Actually, I don't mind. They are very comfortable. I tell him as we walk out of the room. I head towards the bathroom when he calls after me. Kyra, just let me know if you need company. He winks at me playfully as I turn back and I shake my head at him with a smile. I will manage, but thanks for the offer. I say with a chuckle and close the door behind me, making sure it's locked before I undress. When I finish with my bath, I wear the clothes and walk out of the bathroom to find Cody sitting on the couch, talking on the phone, quietly with a serious expression on his face. He hangs up as soon as he sees me and turns to me with a smile. Better? He asks. Yeah, I feel like I was reborn. I tell him with a chuckle. It's my turn then, I want to reborn as well. He jokes and heads towards the bathroom, while I sit on his place to watch the TV. I think about searching through the closet, but I decide against it. I will wait for a better opportunity. I don't think he would have looked at me like that if only the handcuffs were there, or maybe I am just overthinking it. When Cody was done with his shower, we decided to watch a movie, so we sat side by side on the couch, while eating snacks. Surprisingly he didn't try anything, what I am glad for since before, when we were in the cinema. He couldn't keep his hands off of me. In fact, it doesn't matter where we were on a date. He was touching me nonstop. It was a good movie. He says with a yawn and stands up from the couch, stretching out his limbs. I agree. I like happy ending. I tell him sleepily. Let's go to bed. Huh? He says and I was expecting his sentence to be a seductive one. But it wasn't. Yeah. I am sleepy. I tell him and we head to the bedroom. One second thought, I think I will sleep on the couch. I inform him and he looks at me with a disappointed expression. No, I thought we already talked about this. We are adults. We can sleep on the bed. I won't do anything if you are afraid of that. He says hurriedly and I look at him skeptically. All right, but as soon as you don't let me sleep, I'm going to sleep there. I warn him. Deal. He says with a wide grin. I start to have bad feelings about the deals. Between us. Don't you trust me? He asks when he sees that I am still hesitating. I throw him a pointed look and he holds his hands up in surrender. Okay, that was a stupid question. But I will make sure your opinion will change. Just give me a chance to do so. He says with a sigh and I kind of feel sorry for him. I walk to the bed without a word and lay down, then I pull the covers over me. He does the same and he places a few pillows between us, like a pillow wall. Like it would stop him, huh? I see, I will stay on my side and you will stay on yours. He says with a smile and I smile back at him. Good night Cody. Good night Kyra. Next day we are heading to the mall to buy some clothes and necessities for me. My period is around the corner, so I shouldn't forget to buy some pads. Just choose whatever you want, it's on me. Cody says and I look at him with wide eyes. I didn't think he has that much of money. He is living in a simple apartment after all, but now I realize that I don't even know anything about him, or his family. It's okay I just need a few set of clothes, and a few other things. I tell him with a smile. All right, but don't hold back I have enough money to buy the whole mall, for you if you wish. He says and I stop in my track to turn to him, as we were walking through the entrance of the mall. I didn't know you are that loaded. I tell him with a surprised expression. It's not a big deal my dad is a politician, but I don't really like to talk about him. We don't exactly have a good relationship. He just gave me his gold credit card when I moved out of his mansion, and that's it I talk to mom once a week.
but dad never bothered to cow he always wanted me to follow his footsteps as a politician and since i told him i don't want to and started fighting instead we don't get along any more he explains as we walk in the front of the boutiques he looks sad but try to mask it with his smile what doesn't reach his eyes so let's spend daddy's money huh i ask him with a wink to cheer him up and he lets out a laugh you bet he says and we go to shop from shop and buy everything what we like it doesn't matter if we actually need them or not it sure feels good to go shopping like this we don't need to check the prizes it's fun to be rich huh cody i think we should stop i don't think this all will fit into the car i tell him with a giggle we are shopping already for hours and i am very tired and hungry don't worry we can ask them to send the rest to the house he says with a shrug are you hungry he asks as he looks at me his hands are full with paper bags just like mine i am starving let's sit down somewhere before i collapse and you will need to carry me to i tell him with a tired chuckle and he lets out a laugh i wouldn't mind but yeah i am pretty tired too he says and we drag ourselves to the closest food stand what do you want to eat he asks as i drop my body on a chair i will have the same as you i tell him with a yawn all right he says with a chuckle and walks away to get some food for us and i just look at his retired back with a frown is this guy the cody i met in that restaurant a month ago he seems like a totally different person what worries me a little i don't know if he was pretending to be the cool guy before or uh, he is pretending to be the sweet guy now oh sorry i look up to see a guy who apparently kicked into one of my paper bags accidentally as he was walking by and now he is bending down to pick it up he places it back to the heap and smiles at me apologetically it's okay i am sorry to take so much space with my stuff i tell him with a chuckle he is a handsome guy and he seems nice i should have looked where i was going he says and looks at my bags i heard that women like shopping but i didn't think it's that serious until now he says jokingly and i let out a laugh i am not the shopping lover type usually this is actually the first time i am buying so many things i explain to him for some reason i don't want him to think i am one of those rich brats who likes to spend daddy's money no you are one of those who likes to spend others daddy's money i thought to myself sarcastically oh i see can i he starts but cody arrives with our food and cuts him of get lost i look at him with wide eyes and want to tell him to be nice but then i see the insane expression on his face as he looks at the guy who just holds his hands up in surrender sorry man he says and walks away after sending a small smile in my way with a wave what got into you he just apologized for bumping into our bags i scold him in a whisper not wanting to bring more attention to us as we already have because of the bags around us he turns to me with the same look he gave the guy and the chill run down my spine Ain't. he says shortly more like orders and i choose not to argue with him or talk about the guy further so i just start to eat the hamburger he placed in the front of me we just eat in silence and he didn't say a word to me since then why are you angry i ask him when i have enough of his silent treatment and he looks at me with the same hard expression do you really asking me why i leave you for two minutes and you are already flirting with someone he says with gritted teeth and i just stare at him with my mouth agape what are you talking about cody i didn't flirt with him i told you what happened why are you making a big deal out of it i ask him in disbelief whatever you women are all liars your word doesn't mean anything he says and i fold my arms in the front of my chest while i glare at him I feel the anger raising inside of me. Don't talk about women like we are all the same. You who sleeps around all the time. You who cheated on me. 
and were talking to your girls at the time we were together, while lying in my face. I tell him angrily and his eyes widen at my outburst. Kyra, I didn't, he starts but I cut him off. Better you watch your attitude because no girl will accept this from any man, doesn't matter how handsome or rich he is. I tell him and stand up furiously. Where are you going? He asks with a worried expression. To the washroom. Can I? I ask him sarcastically before I walk away while cursing him. This guy is not normal, he has serious problems and trust issues. I do my business and stay by the sink for a few more minutes to calm myself down. Twenty-eight days to go, and I can finally go home to Jace, but now that I think about it, it feels too far and honestly I don't think he will just let me go easily. Especially after I saw his reaction to a harmless conversation with an other guy. He will never let us to be happy. I let out a deep sigh, and try to stay positive. Maybe I can help him to change his ways somehow. I decide to head out, but, as I make my way out of the washroom, I bump into someone by the door. Before I can apologize I look up to see it's Cody. Finally. Are you okay? I am so sorry Kyra you are right. I am just too insecure since you left me, and started dating that guy I am sorry. I promise I will work on it. Just don't give up on me yet. He says worriedly while he takes my hand in his, right in the doorway of the bathroom, and my anger fly out of the window right away. I realize that he really needs help, and I kind of feel responsible for the state he's in right now. I let out a sigh, and squeeze his hands reassuringly. It's okay, just listen to me next time. I am not a slutty and you know that. You shouldn't let your anger get the best of you. I tell him and he nods his head eagerly. I know, you are right. We had a fantastic day, and I ruined it with my jealous outburst. He says with an embarrassed chuckle. What are you doing to me? I was never like this with any other girl. He says as we walk back to our table. Let's go back to the house, huh? We could watch a movie or something. I offer and he nods his head with a smile. We collect our bags from the floor and head out of the mall, towards his car. The movie is a good idea, I am very tired. How about you? He asks with a chuckle. Want me to carry you? He asks. I am fine, we are almost there anyway so we can rest soon. I tell him, when I think about something important. Cody. I call out his name. Hum. He hums as he tries to fit everything into the car. Can I call my parents when we get back? They don't know anything about me being here, and I used to call them once a week at least I don't want them to worry. I explain to him and he nods his head. Of course, here is my phone. He says and hands me his phone. Thanks. I thank him happily and unlock his phone, easily since it doesn't have a password. My eyes widen when I see his background photo. It's me while I was asleep. I just shake my head and dial my parents' number. Hello. Mom answers the phone. Hi mom it's me. I say. Oh honey, from whose number are you calling? She asks. Hum from a friend's number my phone is broken, and I didn't have time to buy a new one yet. I lie to her, and I already feel shit about it. But I don't want to tell her the truth, because she will freak out. Okay. Is Justin there yet? She asks and I frown. Justin. I ask. Yeah, he wanted to surprise you. He left yesterday. She says and I panic a little. Oh, I will tell him. Can you give me his number? I don't know it from my head. I say. Of course sweetie, I will send it in a text. She says, Thank you mom. I love you and tell dad I love him too. We love you to honey. Take care. We say goodbye and I dial my brother's number immediately. Hello. Justin. Kyra. Oh my god where are you? I came to surprise you by your school and your friends just told me what happened. He says and I hear Jace in the back. Is that her? Let me talk to her. He says anxiously. Wait. 
Justin tells him, Come down, Justin. I am fine. I will tell you everything later, but don't worry about me. I am here in my own will. I explain to him, hoping Jace hears my words as well. Don't worry. Your friends just told me you were kidnapped and you are telling me not to worry. He asks me in disbelief. Can we not talk about this now? I promise. I am fine. I tell him. Then let me see you. He says and I look at Cody as he is driving. What? He whispers as he looks at me, and I cover the phone with my hand. My brother wants to see me. I tell him and he frowns. Only if he comes alone. You can see him tomorrow by the mall. He says and I nod my head with a wide smile, and he smiles back at me lovingly. All right, but you need to come alone. I will send you the address where we can meet and the time. I tell him happily. All right, sis. Why so mysterious? He asks with a sigh. We will talk about it tomorrow. I tell him. All right, but here is someone who wants to talk to you. He says and hands the phone to Jace before I can protest. It's not like I don't want to talk to him, just not when Cody is sitting right next to me. Kyra. He says into the phone and I feel tears are filling up my eyes from hearing his voice. I miss him so much. Are you okay? Are you hurt? He asks worriedly. He sounds like he will cry in any minute. I am fine. Please don't worry. I say with shaking voice, and I see Cody looks at me from the corner of my eyes. I am so glad to hear your voice. He says with a sniff. I swear if he hurts you I will kill him with my bare hands. He says. Just trust me okay. I ask him, but the phone is snatched out of my hand, before I can hear his answer. Wait, I try to protest but one look at him is enough to hold my tongue. Cody brings the phone to his ear to hear, who I am talking to. He looks at me angrily and pulls over the car, still with the phone on his ear. Listen lover boy. She is mine so it's better if you forget about her, because she will choose me you have no chance here. He says and I hear Jace shouting into the phone, before Cody hangs up on him, and pockets his phone, then turns to me with a hard expression. Let me explain. I called my brother, but Jace was there and. I try to explain before he explodes. And you told him to trust you. He cuts me of in a deep voice and I gulp. What else should I have said, huh? I ask him, starting to get upset as well and he looks away, and starts driving again in silence. When we get back to the house we carry everything inside, but he doesn't talk to me. I am so excited of the things we bought. I tell him, trying to cheer him up, but he doesn't say anything. I let out a sigh and turn to him. Cody, please talk to me. I plead with him and he finally looks at me. Your plan is to wait till the month is over and then go back to him, right? That's why you told him to trust you, right? He asks accusingly and I look down at my hands. No I, I start but he cuts me of. Don't lie to me. He yells and I take a step back unintentionally. He lets out a sigh, as he sees my reaction and lowers his head. I am sorry for yelling at you I just I will prove you that I am better than him. I don't care what you told him, because you will change your mind and stay with me when the time is up. He says with determination. It's okay let's just put everything away and choose a movie, huh? I tell him with a smile, and he smiles back at me. I am glad he lets it go. I can see he is really trying, but life with him would be like a roller coaster, and I don't think I will be up for that, ever. I stand in the bedroom in the front of the closet, in the middle of the pile of clothes and accessories, thinking how I should organize them to make everything fit into the closet. Do you need help? Cody asks with a chuckle, as he sees me in the middle of the mess. I can handle it it will take time, but it will be okay. I tell him. All right, I will let you to it then. I will make some dinner and choose a movie in the meantime. Just come out when you are done. He says with a smile, and I nod my head with a sigh. Okay, but check on me, if I don't come out after an hour.
because that will mean I got lost in this mess. I tell him jokingly, and he lets out a laugh. All right, I will come and save you if that happens. He says with a chuckle, and leaves to go to the kitchen, and I start folding the clothes. When I am done, I start to make place in the closet, next to Coda's clothes. When I am done putting everything away, I close the closet door with a sigh, and turn to go to the bed tiredly, to sit down for a moment, since my legs are killing me. Are you fucking kidding me? I let out a tired groan, as I see the bed full with bags, belts and shoes. I totally forgot about those. I turn back to the closet to see if it will fit the bags at least. I see a box on the top shelf, and there is still some space, so I reach up to put the bags next to the box. It's too high for me, so as I am trying, I push the box above the shelf accidentally, and it falls to the floor with a loud thud. Are you okay in there? I hear Cody yelling from the kitchen. Yes, I am still alive. I tell him and hear him chuckling. I look down at the mess. I made Anne bend down with a sigh to collect everything and put them back into the box when a heavy smaller box catches my attention. I open it curiously and gasp as I see what is inside. A gun. Is this what Cody didn't want me to see? I check the gun with shaking hands and it's loaded. I decide to take out the bullets quickly. I don't want Cody to hurt anyone with it, so I need to make sure it's empty before I put it back onto the top shelf hastily and hide the bullets under the bed. Watching a lot of action movie, pays of I guess. Why the hell he needs a gun, a uh, maybe it was already here. That box looks old, so maybe it's not even his. Either way I feel slightly better after hiding the bullets. When I am done putting everything away, I head out to the living room to see Cody taking a nap on the couch. He looks so peaceful, almost adorable as he sleeps. I go to the kitchen to check what he was making because I start to be hungry. Are you finished already? I jump as I hear his voice from the doorway and drop the spoon full of food in my hand. The food flies and lands on my arm, burning my skin. Ouch. I let out a yelp and Cody rushes to my side. Shit Kyra. I am sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. He says and cleans my arm with a paper towel gently. I guess he wasn't asleep after all. It's okay, I was just startled, it wasn't your fault. I tell him. I thought you were sleeping, and I didn't expect you to appear in the doorway. I add with a chuckle. Come on, I will apply some ointment. He says and sits me down by the table to treat my arm, what turned red already. It's burning like hell, so I go to the sink and pour cold water on it what calms it down right away, while he is getting the first aid kit from the bathroom. The next day I am getting ready to meet my brother at the mall. Cody insisted to come with me, because he doesn't trust me, and he thinks I will escape with my brother. I wish I could but even if I would, I know he won't leave us alone. It would just make him angry. I am so excited to see Justin. I miss him like hell. When I am ready, I head out of the room to the living room, where I see Cody watching TV. Are you ready? I ask him and he smiles at me. I am let's go. He says and we head out of the house and sit into the car. So what is allowed to say and what's not? I ask him, referring for my brother's visit. You can tell him whatever you want. I will be close by, but don't point me out to him. He says and I nod my head in understanding. I will just tell him the truth, huh? I say and he shrugs his shoulders. I would introduce myself to him, but I thought this isn't the right time and situation. He says nervously like he is afraid of my brother opinion about him. I wouldn't mind. I tell him to make him feel better and he smiles at me, then turns back to the road. I kind of like this side of him, but I am not sure if he just pretends to be nice to win me over, or he is really like that. We arrive to the mall a bit earlier and walk inside together. Where will you wait for me? I ask him as we get closer to the cafe, where I agreed to meet my brother. 
I will sit right by the next table, he says with a smile, and I look at him with wide eyes at first, but decide not to say anything. He takes a seat by a table and points me to the one next to it to sit down. I guess he wants to hear what we are talking about. I take a seat opposite of him and wait for Justin to come anxiously. I don't need to wait long since I see him walking through the door and looking around. I wave my hand excitedly, and he makes his way to me with a wide, happy smile. Oh my God, Kyra, it's so good to see you are okay. He says and wraps his arms around me as I stand up to greet him and spins me around what makes me squeal in excitement. Of course I am fine. You shouldn't worry about me. You know that I can take care of myself. I tell him as we sit down. I can't see Cody since Justin bored shoulders, hides him from my view. I know, but can you blame me? I came to surprise you, and I needed to learn from your friends, by the school, that you were kidnapped by some psycho, who is obsessed with you I almost got a heart attack. What's going on, sis? He asks worriedly and I chuckle on his expression. Hey, calm down, and I will explain everything to you. But first let's order because I am starving. I tell him with a smile. Is he starving you? He asks with wide eyes, and I hear a grunt from Cody. Luckily Jason didn't notice. What? Of course not. Stop assuming things and wait till I tell you what's going on. I tell him with a chuckle, and he lets out a sigh, and calms down finally. We order and I start to tell him the story till we wait for our drinks and food. I tell him everything, except the details of our relationship with Cody, when we were dating. I mean, he would freak out if I tell him, that Cody wanted to drug me, and cheated on me. He would drag me to his car to take me back to law. Wait now that I think about it, it wouldn't be bad at all, but I think Cody will try to find me there as well. Our food arrived in the meantime, so we are eating while we are chatting. Well, that's messed up. He says with a sigh when I finish. Are you sure he will let you go if you choose to after the month is over? He asks. Yes, I think so. I answer, not quite sure myself. If he really loves me, he will want me to be happy. I tell him, making sure Cody heard me as well. All right, just be careful and call me if you need me. I will come with the first plane. He says and I nod my head with a smile. He takes my hand above the table and squeezes it. I don't know what would I do if something happens to my only sister. He says and while he talks, he slips a ring on my finger. I look at him in confusion, and he winks at me, and turns my hand, so my palm looks upward. I didn't tell mom and dad, and I think it's better that way. He keeps talking, but points to a small button on the ring. I asked Hunter not to say anything to them either. He says and now I realize that he must have gotten this ring from Hunter. Maybe there is a GPS inside of it, just like it was in the necklace, and the button, might be for emergency, if I need help. Thank you, Justin, I love you so much and please don't worry about me, I will be fine, we will stay in touch though, I will tell you when I have the chance. I say, trying to hold my tears back and he just nods his head. I don't want him to worry about me. When we finish eating, we say goodbye and I promise him once again, that I will be careful before he leaves with a small wave. Your brother seems nice. I turn my head towards Cody, as I was watching my brother disappearing in the crowd. Yes, he is. I say with a smile. Come on, let's go home. He says and we walk out of the mall through the back door. Cody doesn't say anything about the conversation between me and my brother. I guess he has no objection, so I don't say anything about it.